Tracy here at Tinker Art Studio. Today we are going to be making a painted branch wall hanging. This workshop, in this workshop, we'll be painting our branch, adding all kinds of cool things to it, and in the end, you'll be able to hang it and you'll have a neat decoration for your wall in your room or somewhere else in your house. I am going to start this workshop by reading one of my very favorite books called Stuck by Oliver Jeffers. If you would like to move on past this reading, this read aloud, you're welcome to just toggle on over to where we'll start painting our branch. I know there's a lot of different ages joining us, so some of you might be might really enjoy reading this book with me, and others I know you might like to move on to get started on the art project right away. If you have a branch and some paints, you can join us today with this workshop. You can always come back to it later and add more things if you haven't collected all your materials yet. For the full materials list, click the link in this video description. In addition to those materials, you might also like to collect some pine cones. These are fun to paint and add onto our, our painted branch a little later on. If you have any other materials at home, like beads or other kinds of wire, maybe pipe cleaners, anything that you can use to wrap around your branch to add some interest and details that you think would be fun to have in your artwork, now would be a great time to collect it and we, I'll show you how you can use it and add it to your artwork. It all began when Floyd's kite became stuck in a tree. He tried pulling and swinging, but it wouldn't come unstuck. The trouble really began when he threw his favorite shoe to knock the kite loose, and that got stuck too. So he threw up his other shoe to knock down his favorite one, and unbelievably, that got stuck as well. In order to knock down his other shoe, Floyd fetched Mitch. Cats get stuck in trees all the time, but this was getting ridiculous. Floyd fetched a ladder. He was going to sort this out once and for all. And up he threw it. I'm sure you can guess what happened. The ladder was borrowed from a neighbor and would definitely need to be put back before anyone noticed. And in order to do so, Floyd flung a bucket of paint at it. And wouldn't you know it, the bucket of paint got stuck. Then Floyd tried a duck to knock down the bucket of paint, a chair to knock down the duck, his friend's bicycle to knock down the chair, the kitchen sink to knock down his friend's bicycle, Floyd's front door to knock down the kitchen sink, the family car to knock down the front door, the milkman to knock down the family car, an orangutan to knock down the milkman who surely had somewhere else to be. A small boat to knock down the orangutan, a big boat to knock down the small boat, a rhinoceros to knock down the big boat, a long distance truck to knock down the rhinoceros, the house across the street to knock down the long distance truck, a lighthouse to knock down the house no longer across the street. And this whale says, hi, what are you doing? A curious whale in the wrong place at the wrong time to knock down the lighthouse. And they all got stuck. A fire engine was passing and heard all the commotion. The firemen stopped to see if they could help at all. And up they went. First the engine, followed by the firemen, one by one. And there they stayed, stuck between the orangutan and one of the boats. Firemen would definitely be noticed missing, and Floyd knew he'd be in big trouble. But then he had an idea, and he went to find a saw. He lined it up as best he could and hurled it up in the tree. And that was it. 
There was no more room left in the tree and the kite came unstuck. Floyd was delighted. He had forgotten all about his kite and put it to use immediately, enjoying the rest of his day very much. That night, Floyd fell asleep exhausted. Though before he did, he could have sworn there was something he was forgetting. Hmm. Here's the fireman in the tree. It says, hang on a minute, lads. I've got a great idea. I like to read a story to inspire our artwork. And stuck is a really fun one to think about what you might fit, put in a tree if you had a choice to stick things in a tree. We are going to be decorating our branches today with all sorts of fun things. And lots of things are going to be stuck in our branch. Let's get started. Now, before we get started too much into our painting of our branch, I'm gonna tell you a couple of things about how this workshop will run. I'm gonna guide you through this lesson and by the end, you will have your very own totally complete um, painted branch wall hanging or sculpture. Now, there will be different points when I will invite you to pause the video so that you can go and continue um, to complete this part of the project on your own. You can then come back to the video and restart it and we'll pick right back up where we left off. If at any point you would like to take a break, take a little walk outside, get up and get some water, I would also encourage you to do that. You can always just pause the video and come right back. I won't move on without you. The first thing we are going to do is pour our paint palette. Now I chose blue, green, and purple. These are called the cool colors. And sometimes you might think about how colors make you feel or what type of emotion they have with them. So cool colors to me feel very calming and soothing, which is something that I wanted to incorporate into my artwork today. They also kind of remind me of winter time because the cool colors we often see in the winter or in the spring with snow or green grass kind of growing and flowers coming up in the spring. So the first thing I'll do is pour a little bit of each of my colors into my paint palette. You might be working on something like a um, plate at home, a paper plate, or even a washable plate that works well too. Now I poured just a little bit of paint into my paint palette. It's a little tricky to see, but this is like a dime size amount of paint because I'm gonna be mixing everything with white as well. So the white will increase the volume of the paint a little bit. The reason I mix everything with white by going in and putting just a little drip of white on top of my colors that I just poured, just one drop, maybe two, is because this is going to help my paint be more opaque or a stronger color and really show up well on my branch. If I don't mix any white in, it might just, um, you'll see the branch through the paint a little bit instead of the paint really being a strong color on your branch. Now I've picked up most of my purple on my paintbrush and I am gonna start by just painting my branch however I would like. You might be interested in doing stripes of different colors. Maybe you want to do your whole branch one color, or maybe you wanna use all the colors of the rainbow. That is totally up to you. Now that you've poured your paints, I want to remind you something about the paints that you're using. The paints I am using today are called tempera paints, and it's a very washable paint. So if I accidentally got some on my sleeve, I could put it in the washer and it would come out. If you are using acrylic paints at home, acrylic paints work really well for this project. They will stick forever to your branch, even if you had it hanging outside in a real tree. They will also stick forever to your clothes. So be careful if you're using acrylic paints. I would also recommend laying some paper down underneath your work surface, especially if you're using acrylic paints. You could use a few pieces of paper you have on hand, 
some newspaper would work well, butcher paper if you have it. That will help protect your work surface. If you have long sleeves, I would also encourage you to roll them up above your elbows. Now that I am finished with painting this part of my branch purple, I would like to move on to another color. To do that, I need to wash and dry my brush. So I'm gonna take my water bucket and dance, 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 dance my uh, paintbrush on the bottom of my water bucket, bucket to get it really nice and clean. Then I have a rag underneath my water bucket and I'm gonna dry my paintbrush on the rag or the towel. A paper towel would also work, work well. I want a nice dry brush so that I don't end up mixing paint in with my um, paint, sorry, mixing water in with my paints. It would make my paints a little too watery and then they wouldn't go on my branch very well. I'm ready to move on to another color. So I'm gonna stir that white in or mix it in that I had used before and keep painting. You can switch colors as many times as you like. I'm gonna keep working on mine and I would invite you to pause this video and go ahead and paint your entire branch. Now that I have painted my branch, I need to give it a few minutes to dry. So I'm gonna set it to the side and work on another part of my project while I'm waiting for that to dry. I still have some paints in my paint palette here because I poured some more paints. And I'm going to dry my brush and take a piece of paper. Now the paper that I have is cardstock paper, so it's a little bit thicker. You could use cardboard, regular paper, cardstock, watercolor paper would work really well for this. And what I'm going to be doing is painting my entire paper with color, just filling the whole space. Later, we'll use this paper, the painted paper, to cut out some shapes, like leaf shapes or things that we might want to hang on our tree or on our branch. So I'm going to be painting my paper with color. I really like, because I'm using all cool colors, I like to, when my paintbrush runs out of paint like this, instead of washing and drying it, just dip into another color and keep painting. These cool colors are very friendly with each other, and I kind of like the way that they blend together on my paper. I'm pretty much out of this green paint. I'm gonna dip into the blue paint and see what that looks like. Because I'm just gonna be cutting shapes out of this paper, my main goal here is to fill my entire paper with color. Now, if you have a different way that you would like to fill your paper with color, I would love for you to do that. You are the artist, you get to decide. This is just one way to cover your whole paper in paint. You are welcome to pause the video and go ahead and paint paper, cardboard, or another surface that you can use scissors to cut shapes out of later. Another choice you can consider with your branch after you have painted your whole branch is going back with a smaller or detailed brush. Now this will also work with the larger brush if you don't have a smaller brush. I'm going to go in with my smaller detail brush and add some interesting details in white. White on top of these colors that I painted will really help or will really pop and stand out. So I'm doing some white dots on top of the blue that I already painted. If you have other ideas for details that you think would be interesting on your branch, I would encourage you to do that. It might be helpful to let your paint dry a little bit before you go in and do details. You can also try it while your, um, the paint on your branch is still a little bit wet. Now, if you are like me and waiting for your branch to dry, I'm gonna show you how we can work on some other things while we're waiting. Remember those pine cones I showed you earlier on? I'm going to take a moment and paint these pine cones. You might like to leave yours natural colored and not paint them, or you might like to paint them. You can paint them any way you'd like if you do choose to paint them. 
In addition to painting pine cones, some other choices of things you might enjoy doing are is taking a piece of wire. This is aluminum wire. It's really nice and soft and flexible, and there's all kinds of things you can do with it. I'm going to cut this wire. It cuts so easily that you can even just use a pair of kid scissors. Anytime you're cutting anything, always be mindful of where your fingers are, where people are around you, um, and the material that you're cutting. I am going to add a little loop in the bottom of on the bottom of my wire so that I can string beads on it and the beads won't fall off the other side. So some choices for ways that you can keep adding to your artwork while you're waiting for your branch to dry is stringing beads on a wire that will later add to our branch, painting pine cones, or if you have pipe cleaners or anything else you'd like to add to your branch artwork, you could start playing with those materials now too. The other way that I like to use wire is just twisting it and bending it in interesting shapes. I might like to twist it into a spiral shape. I'm gonna leave a little extra on the end here so that I can use this to attach it to the branch a little later. noticed my painted paper dried a little more quickly than my branch is. My branch is still drying, so I'm going to leave it to the side to let it keep drying. So are my painted pine cones. While they're drying, I'm going to turn this piece of painted paper over on the back side. Take a pencil or a sharpie or any drawing utensil you have and draw some shapes. I want these shapes to be big enough that when I cut them out, um, I will still have room to, I'm gonna be attaching them or hanging them with the wire onto my branch. So I don't want them to be teeny tiny shapes. You might like kind of small to medium size or maybe larger size shapes. The shapes that I'm going to cut out are going to be kind of medium size leaf shapes. Before I ever cut anything with scissors, I always draw first and then cut on that line. It is much easier for us to cut on a line than it is to try to just think of a shape in our head and cut it out without drawing it. So now I'm using my scissors to cut out that shape I just drew. I could revise it a little bit while I'm cutting if I want. And the shape that I drew was kind of that leaf shape. Let's take a look. Ooh, I like how there's just a little bit of purple peeking in and mostly green and blue. I didn't know what it would turn out like because I just painted the whole front side of my paper. So it's kind of fun to see what happens once you cut shapes out. For a leaf, I'm going to add a little extra bit of details here by cutting out some little triangles off the side of my leaf to really make it look a little more realistic and just add some interest. I might do a couple on one side and another on the other. Now you might choose to cut out shapes totally different from this. You are the artist, you get to decide. I am going to cut out a few more leaf shapes and then we'll start, hopefully my branch will be dry by that point and we'll start assembling everything together. One more thing before we do that. I want you to notice where I drew the leaf shape on the back of my paper. I did not draw it in the middle of the paper. I drew it right off of one of the edges. I would highly recommend drawing your shapes off the edges of your paper rather than having to cut all the way into the middle to cut your shape out of the middle. Leaves cut out, my painted leaves. I also have some beaded wires and my painted pine cones. I am ready to start assembling everything together. Now my painted leaves are going to be attached by hanging on the bottom of some wires that I hang down off my branch. So I want to put a small hole in the bottom of the leaf or somewhere on the leaf so that it can hang. I'm going to use this aluminum wire that I have to poke the hole right through the leaf. 
Now, depending on your age, I would highly recommend an adult help you with this or do this for you. I can hold my leaf in my hand, use the end of the wire, whoops, and just kind of wiggle it through <laughs> so that it pokes a hole in the paper. There we go. Um, if you have a tool like a small needle or something else at home that you would prefer to use or have your parents help you with or an adult help you with, you might like to do that as well. I'm gonna pop some holes in the rest of these pieces of paper. You could either go ahead and string them on a piece of wire or do that a little later. Pop, there we go. I'm going to take my branch and I like to start with some wire. You might like to use wire or pipe cleaners or something else that you have that wraps well. And um, I'm just gonna start finding, by finding a spot on my branch that I think would look kind of interesting with this wire wrapped around it. Now notice that this one I'm using is just the wire. It doesn't even have any beads or leaves strung on it. And you might like to choose to do some kind of like this, or maybe all of your wire has beads on it. I'm just bending it and wrapping it around. Now I might like to use this one that I had strung beads on. I am going to hang this one off of my branch. So to do that, I will just wrap that end of the wire where there aren't any beads so that it stays on my branch. You might like to have a different look to yours where it also bends back up, hangs down. I'm not sure. You get to decide how you'd like to do this. Okay, now I'm going to start adding some of these leaves, I think. And I might even do another beaded wire with leaves on the bottom, hanging off the bottom. I think that would look pretty interesting. Have fun adding your pieces to your branch however you would like. You can press pause and then come back when you're ready. Here's how my branch is coming along. I've added leaves at the bottom of my beaded wires and some wire across the top and a little kind of floating leaf up there on that top edge. I wanna show you how you can add your pine cones. I would again take some wire, always being mindful of these kind of pokey ends, and wrap my pine cone in the wire. That way you can add your pine cone anywhere you'd like on your branch without having to use glue or anything like that. If you have a pine cone that looks more like this, you can always kind of use that to your advantage, those spaces in the middle and wrap the, some of the wire a little more tightly through the middle. Added the different pieces I've already created onto my um, painted branch I have one more piece that I wanna show you today, and that is how to use yarn. Yarn is a really fun material to use for all different kinds of things, and I would like to show you how to hang yarn from your branch if you'd like to add it. I'm gonna start by cutting some pieces of yarn that are mm, about the length of my arm. I'm gonna cut a few pieces at a time, they can be slightly different lengths, a little longer, a little shorter, totally up to you. You can always trim them down later. Now the yarn that I'm using just comes off of this kind of rainbow ball of yarn. So I'm just kind of taking whatever colors are coming up next. You might have some yarn where you can choose the specific colors you'd like as well. I sort of like that it's this pop of yellowy green because it's kind of a natural color against um, all of the cool colors I have. It's kind of nice to have a little warm color in there. I wanna show you how to do a half hitch, um, which is a way that we can easily add yarn to our artwork by folding it in half and not really having to do any knots. I'm gonna start by folding it in half and then put that spot where I fold it in half on one side of my branch to make a little window or an opening. I put my fingers through, pull the tails through, and then pull it down. And now I have my yarn with two strings hanging down. I'm gonna keep doing that right next door to each other, 
folding my yarn in half, putting it on one side of my branch with the window there, and then pulling the tails through that window or opening. You can keep these pretty close together if you'd like for a certain kind of look where they're all just kind of right next to each other. You could spread them out, maybe put some up here or some down here. However you want to create this, it will look really neat if you'd like to add this kind of extra texture and yarn to it. I want to show you one other thing you could do with yarn, and you might have more ideas too. Maybe you tie a little piece on over here and then weave it back and forth or string it back and forth between these two branches. That might be another fun way to use yarn on your branch and you probably have more ideas too. Now we're ready for finishing touches. Take a look at your artwork and see if there's anything else you would like to add or change. Maybe you'd like to give your yarn a little haircut and trim it into a shape or trim them shorter. Maybe you want to adjust some of your wire or add a few more beads. Once you feel like you have added all the finishing touches onto your branch, we are going to use a little more yarn to add a hanger so that you can nicely hang it on the wall. Mine is hanging by, I pushed a couple thumbtacks in the wall and I just set it up there like a little shelf. I want to get a pretty generous amount of yarn for a hanger. It's much easier to just cut off extra later rather than having to um, not have enough to start. I'll take one side of my yarn and I'm going to use go kind of on the edge over here of my branch. And I'm going to tie what's called a square knot. This is the first step to tying your shoes mm -hmm. twice where I loop it through, pull it tightly, and then do that again. You can always ask an adult to help you with this also. I tied that in a knot. I have a little extra, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim it off with my scissors. Don't trim too closely to this knot, or, um, your, or your yarn or the knot might come out. So leave a little extra room. Now I'm gonna go over on this side and to add my hanger. Now, you might need to do a little balancing and kind of decide if you want to attach it to the, this part of your branch, if you have a Y branch like I do, or maybe this one. Depending on where you attach it, it might hang a little differently on the wall. I'm going to attach mine, I think, to this part of my branch, and I'll see how that goes. I could always add another piece of yarn a little later to make it a little more secure as it hangs. I'm going to take it off of the push pins where it was hanging and see how that works. I have some extra yarn over here, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off. Thank you so much for following along with our painted branch wall hanging workshop today. I hope you had so much fun and I would love to see your artwork. Take a picture and email it to me or Take a picture and post it on Instagram, tagging Tinker Art Studio, and we will share it on our stories. If you email it to me, I'll share it on our stories as well. Thanks again, and I can't wait to see you for our next workshop.